Do you understand how great God's love is for you? Well, let's consider God's love is shown for all of us in the giving and in the suffering of his only begotten son. Lesson number two of the winter quarter is titled God sends his servant to suffer for us coming from the selected scripture there in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, starting at the fourth verse, going through the sixth verse. Then we skip down to the 10th verse and we go through the 12th verse. We are going to be taking a look at a very familiar prophecy here. The prophecy of the suffering servant, a prophecy that in the book of Acts, it is shown to us that the Ethiopian eunuch was, was reading this prophecy of Isaiah and the Ethiopian eunuch did not understand the prophecy, did not know who it was that was being spoken of. And so the Lord sent to this eunuch, Philip. Philip showed up and began to question the man. Do you know who it is? Do you understand the prophecy? And when the eunuch looked at him and said, no, we see in that scripture where Philip broke down this wonderful prophecy of the suffering servant. And again, what it shows us here, what this prophecy is going to show us here is God's love for us. It's going to show the depth of, of the Lord's love for you. So I certainly hope that you will pay attention to this prophecy as we take a look at the opening verse there in our Sunday school lesson this week there, the fourth verse where the scripture, it starts off by telling us there that the suffering servant has borne our griefs. To, to, board, to bear our griefs means that the suffering servant is carrying, taking on, accepting our griefs. That would, that would raise the question, what are our griefs? What are the griefs that the suffering servant, the only begotten son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, what are our griefs that, that he has taken on? Well, let's think about this. Every single person living in the world, we have our trials, we have our tribulations, we have our ups, we have our downs. We have those days when we are in sickness and those days when we're actually in good health. We have those days when we are in pain. We have those days when we act out. We have those moments where we move in disobedience against the Lord. And so Christ, he takes on all of that for us. Everything that, that you and I go through, our trials, our tribulations, our afflictions, our infirmities, when we are disobedient, when we sin against God, in other words, the only begotten son, Christ, our suffering servant, he takes those things on for us. And so, We'll see there that the prophecy it speaks to him being wounded for our transgressions. The prophecy there in the fifth verse, it speaks to him bruised for our iniquities. Again, we know that again, Jesus is being spoken of here. And when we look at his story, especially in that week, what we call Passion Week, we know that Christ, he was literally whipped. We know that Christ, he was literally beaten for crimes. Crimes, by the way, that he did not do. He did not commit any crimes. We know that Christ, that he was innocent of a crime that they charged him with, which, which was blasphemy. Christ didn't blaspheme. Christ was indeed the only begotten son of God, but he was charged for that. And then he was charged for our crimes. And again, what are our crimes? Those moments when we act out in disobedience, those moments where we think, disobediently. Again, Christ took on all of that again for us. The prophecy there in the fifth verse, it tells us there again, the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are healed to be chastised. That means that one has been beaten. One has had harm inflicted upon them. Again, Jesus, he was punished. And again, who was it that he was punished for? He was punished for us. Jesus, he was punished and he was punished as a sinner. You see, Jesus, whether you realize this or not, he became a sinner for us when he was again taking on our sins, when he was taking on our crimes. One who was holy, one who was righteous, one who was divine, he became sin. The very thing that the Lord 
despises Jesus. He came, he became that for us. As the prophecy says there in the sixth verse, we are like a sheep that has wandered off and gone astray. That is talking about our disobedience. Again, we don't follow in the way of the Lord. Even all of us who, who have taken up a vow, who have committed ourselves to living in obedience, we still have those moments where we stray away. We still have those moments where we disobey. We have those moments where our thoughts, where they betray us. We have those moments where our actions, they betray our faith. And so again, the prophecy there, it speaks again of guess who? It speaks of you. It speaks of me. It speaks of all of us, whether we have confessed our faith in, in the heart, whether we are a professed believer or whether or not we believe or not. Again, this prophecy is speaking about us. And then again, specifically there, it says that we are, we are like a sheep that has wandered off and gone astray. So the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all is what the prophecy says there. So consider that Jesus, one who knew no sin, consider again that he was holy, that he was righteous, consider again that, that he was divine and consider again that he became sin. Harm was um, inflicted on him to become our propitiation. That means that, that harm was inflicted on him to become our atonement offering. Jesus, he is our, our scapegoat. Jesus, he is also our Passover offering as well. All of us who are of the church today, again, Jesus, he is our propitiation so that again, harmony can, can be brought between us and the Lord so that peace can be made between us and the Lord. Again, thinking about our Sunday school lesson last week, you and I, in the life that we live, we wage war against God around the clock. And the way that we wage war against God around the clock is by sin. We are sinful beings. And again, like I said in last week's lesson, the only difference between the sinner and us is that we are justified of our sins. Because again, as we see here in our lesson today, Christ has laid his life down for us. He gave up his body for us. Again, the chastisement of our peace is on him. And so the scripture, it tells us there in the 10th verse there, again, taking a look at this prophecy, it tells us there that it pleased the Lord to bruise his servant and to put him to grief. Think about this. It pleased the Lord to wound and to have his servant beaten. And again, who is his servant? Well, his servant is Christ, the Messiah, his only begotten son. And it pleased him to offer his only begotten son up. And why did it please him? Because again, God desires for us to dwell with him and for him to dwell with us. It goes all the way back to why it is that God created us. God did not create us to be servants. God did not create us to, to suffer in sin. When, when the devil in the garden, when he caused man to fall in the garden, when he persuaded man to fall in the garden, the Lord, he made a promise right then and right there. A promise that would be for our salvation, our deliverance, because God, he created us in his glory and in his love. And he created us for the express purpose of dwelling with us, not temporarily, but for everlasting life. And so for the Lord to end that warfare, for the Lord to pardon our sins and our iniquity, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, he gave the world his only begotten son, his precious son he gave for us. How many of us would offer up our children for the lives of another to save another from eternal condemnation? How many of us would be willing to do that? This again, it speaks to the depth of love that the Lord has shown to us through the giving 
of his only begotten son. Again, the prophecy it tells us there in the 11th and in the 12th verse that the Lord shall see the labor of his servant and be satisfied. The servant was numbered, the scripture tells us there, with the transgressors, numbered with us, us, us sinful beings. His only begotten son was numbered with us, bore the sin of many, and made intercession for our transgressions, or for us transgressors, the scripture says there. And again, the scripture tells us there, that the Lord was satisfied. Again, why was it that God was satisfied? Because again, God was getting exactly what he wanted. Again, it goes back to why it was that he made man. And again, the Lord, he made man not to destroy us. Again, there is this thought out there that all God wants to do is destroy us, that all God wants to do is punish us, that all God wants to do is judge us and, and to throw us in, into a lake of fire. That is not the truth. God does not desire that. Again, I, I reference all the time the scripture from the 29th chapter of Jeremiah and the 11th verse, where the Lord's thoughts towards us, they are of peace, a future, and a hope. The Lord wants to, to dwell with you. God doesn't want to destroy you. The last thing that, that God would want us preachers to be preaching about is the lake of fire. The, the Lord doesn't want us to be preaching about people being destroyed, about people being cast away for, for everlasting life and eternal condemnation. That's not the message that God wants us to, to be sharing. The message that the Lord would love for us to share is the message of repentance, to turn away from sin, to, to believe in the one that he gave to the world, to suffer. He gave his only begotten son to suffer for us. That is what the Lord would want us to preach about. He would want us to preach about his only begotten son, because you see, in his only begotten son, as I preached about in my sermon last week, there is life and there is hope. Well, let me back off. I don't want to get into my sermon this week. But again, I repeat to you, in his only begotten son, there is life and there is abundant hope. That is the message that the Lord wants us to preach about. The Lord wants you to dwell with him for everlasting life. The Lord wants you to dwell in his peace. The Lord wants you to dwell in his joy. That is what the Lord wants you to know today. That is why, again, he gave the world his only begotten son, because God loves you. And God's love for you, it runs very deep. It runs so deep that again, he gave his only begotten son to shed blood for you. So what will you do with that? Will you accept his invitation? What is God's invitation? For you to believe in his only begotten son. And again, for whoever believes in his only begotten son, whosoever, meaning anyone can, you have everlasting life. That is what the Lord will want you to know. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson this week. A very short, a short lesson, but a very powerful lesson indeed. So I would recommend that all of you for some homework here this week, just read the entirety of the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Read about the suffering servant. And again, there is a choice to be made. And again, I would hope that you would choose everlasting life. I would hope that you would choose to, to believe in the only begotten son of the Lord. That is what we celebrate this season, the giving of the only begotten son. Okay. All right. So again, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will share this lesson with somebody somewhere. If you aren't already following the New Fire Faith channel, go ahead, make sure that you follow this channel today. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week.